In this video, we're going to take a whirlwind overview of walls in Revit. We're going to start out by clicking New, and then we'll use the simple architectural template. Click OK. We'll notice in the project browser that we are on level one. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. We're going to select the wall tool. We'll notice on the options bar that we have several options related to drawing a wall. So we can set the height of the wall or its depth. In this case, the height is defaulting to 20 feet high. It's currently unconnected rather than being connected to level one or level two. We'll see more about that in a little bit. We'll leave it at unconnected for right now. We can pick the location line so the points we pick on the screen, do they relate to the center line of the wall or the finish face exterior or interior? In our example, we're going to select exterior. We can also have chain selected, which means we can continue to keep picking points rather than picking a wall start point and then an end point and then picking a start point again, which might be the same spot as the previous end point. We can also set an offset, so maybe we're drawing a wall that's four feet away from the points we're picking. And on the ribbon, we have the ability to select the shape of the wall that we're drawing in plan. So down here in the properties palette, we can see a few things about the wall. We'll notice first that all the options on the options bar are also duplicated here in the properties palette. But there are a few additional things like the fact that the bottom of the wall, the base constraint, is on level one and it's not being offset at all. So this tells us that the bottom of the wall is directly on the floor. We can also see the type of wall that is to be drawn. So for now, we'll leave it at basic wall, generic eight inch. And so when we pick on the screen to start drawing a wall, we'll notice that we can specify the length and the angle as we move the cursor around. And if we get close to a horizontal or vertical position relative to our computer screen, we see a dashed line show up and a tooltip. In this case, the tooltip says vertical. And in this case, it says horizontal. So we want to make sure that we see that dashed line and tooltip to know that we are drawn orthogonally on the screen. So if we want to click in a different spot, maybe we didn't intend to start right there, we can hit the escape key one time to cancel that pick. Notice that we're still in the wall command. If I were to hit the escape key one more time, then that would cancel the wall command. So now we're going to pick our first point and normally you want to start somewhere within these four exterior elevation tags that are in the template that we started with. So we're gonna go ahead and click, and then we're gonna start heading to the right with horizontal showing up in the dashed line there. We're gonna draw a 40 foot long line. Now it's possible to get the cursor in the just the right spot so that it says 40 feet and then click. That however takes a little extra time to do that because we have to move our cursor back and forth. And when we click, we could move the mouse a little bit and not get it to be perfectly 40 feet. So really what we need to do, which is something that's more efficient, is just point the cursor in the correct direction and then type the distance we want. So 40 and then hit enter. Now we want to go down. So we point our cursor in the right direction, snapped to the vertical. And then let's say in this case, we want 38 foot eight. So we type 38 space eight. Notice we don't have to type the foot or the inch symbol. Hit enter. Now we'll go to the right and just to try something with a fraction, we'll do 38 space eight space nine sixteenths. Enter. Then we'll point down and type 20. Now we could add the 38, 8, 9 sixteenths and 40 feet and get that length, but we can also just move our cursor over 
and adjacent to another wall, and Revit will find that relationship. So when we see this dashed line, we can go ahead and click and know that this wall aligns with the adjacent wall. And then we can come over here and click. And it will automatically close the wall and clean up the intersection. So we'll go ahead and hit Escape to cancel the wall command. So we pressed Escape twice there. Now we can change the wall type. Remember we used this 8 inch generic wall. So I select this one wall and in the type selector it shows us the current wall type. If we click this drop down list we can pick a different wall type. So maybe we want this exterior brick and CMU on metal stud. So we click that and we see that the wall thickness changes and if we were paying close attention we'd know that the wall thickness got bigger towards the inside of the building and that's because the location line that we selected is set to finish face exterior that defines the part of the wall that should not move so the wall grew inward rather than outward or equally outward and inward if it were set to center line so if we make a mistake and do something that we didn't want to do we can always hit the undo command on the quick access toolbar next I'd like to show you a trick to select all the exterior walls we hover over one wall and then press the tab key and click and that will select what's called a chain of walls so with all these walls selected we can go to the type selector and pick this more complex exterior wall so it's a wall that has more layers or construction materials defined in it and then we click off of it somewhere to unselect it and if we zoom in we can see the wall is thicker but we don't see all the detail like the brick so down here on the view control bar we can change the detail level to either medium or fine and we see more detail show up in the wall type so we'll go ahead and zoom back out so we can see the whole plan next we'll switch to the south elevation so we can see how tall our walls are we could double click on the pointing part of this exterior elevation tag to switch to that view or we can also double click on the view title in the project browser so i'm going to double click on south and we see how tall our wall is and we notice that we have this level 1 and level 2 datum here. If we switch back to the level 1 floor plan, hover, tab, click to select all the exterior walls, we can switch the top constraint from unconnected to say that we want the top of the wall to be connected with level 2. If we switch to the south elevation, we can see that the top of the wall changed to align with the level 2 datum. So level 2 is at 10 feet right now. If we select it and change it to 14 feet, we can see that the height of the wall changed to match level 2. So we've created a parametric relationship between the top of the walls and level 2 in this case. So we'll go ahead and close this view and get back to our floor plan. The next thing that we'll do is look at how we can adjust the wall locations. So if we select this wall, we see the 38.8 that we initially drew, and we can actually click right on this text and type in a new number, and that will reposition the selected wall. So when you want to reposition a wall, you want to select the wall that you actually want to move, and then these temporary dimensions that show up can be used to drive the location of that selected wall. So maybe we want this to be 20 feet. So we just press 20 and enter. Revit defaults to feet, so we didn't need to type the foot symbol. If we select this wall, we'll notice that sometimes these temporary dimensions don't go to the reference point that we want. So maybe we want this dimension to go over here to give us the overall length of the building on this side we can actually just drag this grip that's associated with the witness line for that dimension and then it shows us the overall dimension 
Another thing that we want to be aware of is that the default location of the witness line is to the center of the walls. If we click this grip, it'll toggle between one of three points on a wall, either one of the exterior faces or the center line. So we click this grip rather than drag it. On the Manage tab, as a quick side note, under Additional Settings, there is a Temporary Dimensions option here, which tells us that Revit is looking at the wall center lines, and we could change that here if we want to. We'll leave that as is for now. Hit Cancel. So we'll zoom back out, select that wall on the right again, and point out that if we click this little icon under the Temporary Dimension, that will actually turn that temporary dimension into a permanent dimension. So we've unselected this wall and we notice that the dimension is still there because this is now a permanent dimension. If we select that wall again, we see the text for that permanent dimension turns blue. That actually gives us the opportunity to change this. So if we just wanted that to be 78 feet and hit enter, of course, we should probably change this to be the overall dimension so that it actually works with coursing. And I need to select the wall that I want to move, and then I can click the dimension I want to edit. If you just have a dimension selected and click on the text, you get a different option to edit some of the prefix and suffix information for that dimension. So we'll hit Cancel, and if we want to delete a dimension, we just select it and then press the Delete key on the keyboard. Next, we're going to look at drawing an interior wall and using the Align tool. So we go back to the Architecture tab, select the Wall command, and then we're going to select something a little bit more specific here. Rather than placing a generic wall and changing it later, we happen to know maybe that we want a 4 and 7 eighths inch partition, which is a typical interior wall in a commercial project. And then we're just going to snap here and make sure we're drawing a horizontal line and snap here. We want this wall to line up with the face of this adjacent wall around the corner here. So we're going to go to the Modify tab and select the Align tool and then we'll select the finish face of this adjacent wall. We want to make sure we select the wall we don't want to move first, and then we select the face of the wall we do want to move. And now we see that these two walls align perfectly. So we'll click Modify, and notice that the walls line up. Now let me undo that for one second and show you one other variation on that. So if we Click the Align tool, pick this adjacent wall, and then pick our new interior wall. Immediately after we use the Align command, we have this option of locking that alignment. So if we go ahead and click that, and then click Modify here to cancel that. Whenever we select one of these walls and reposition it, so 18 foot and Enter, we see that that interior wall moves with it because they are locked. So that's a good way of keeping things in alignment that need to stay together. Next we'll take a quick look at how we can take these three walls and make them a different element on the building. So they'll be only 10 feet high instead of 14 foot high up to level 2. To do that, we actually need to split this longer wall here so that we can have a different height. So on the Modify tab, we're going to select the Split Element tool, and then we're going to go ahead and click Split right here. And then we'll hold down the Control key and pick these three walls. And with those three walls selected, we can adjust the top constraint. So now instead of going up to level 2, we want these to be unconnected and specifically 10 feet high. So regardless of what the level 2 datum is set to, these walls will only be and always be 
10 feet high. So if we go to our 3D view here on the quick access toolbar, we can see how that worked out pretty well. We'll double click on the level one floor plan view to get back to plan. Architecture tab, we'll select the wall tool. And then off to the side here, we're gonna just draw a temporary wall so we can look at one last feature. We'll switch to the south elevation and we're gonna use this feature called edit profile. We'll select this wall and maybe in this case we'll change it to not be connected. And there's a feature called edit profile. This allows us to make the top of the wall sloped or maybe one of the edges sloped or the bottom stepped or even add holes to a wall. So in any elevation or section view that's perpendicular to a wall, we can select that wall and click edit profile on the ribbon. Now when we're in a sketch mode, which is when we see this green check mark or this red X, we cannot hit escape to cancel this command. We have to either click the green check mark or the red X to get out of this command. And to the right of that, we see some line tools. So we're going to click this straight line tool and then quickly just draw a line here. So maybe we want a sloped portion of this top of wall. But before we can click the green checkbox, we're going to have to trim the profile here. So I'm going to select trim and clean this up because we have to have a perfectly closed outline. We cannot have lines that cross each other. So we click the green check mark, go back to our 3D view, and in this case I'm holding the shift key and dragging on the center wheel button to orbit the building. So here we can see the wall has been adjusted three-dimensionally, not just in that elevation view. So I'm going to press the control key and then tap the tab key to toggle between my open views. If I select this wall again, I can click reset to undo those changes, or I can click edit profile to make additional changes. So in this case, maybe I want to add a hole somewhere in the middle of the wall. We can add multiple closed outlines within the larger closed outline to make a hole. So we can see we actually added a hole in this 3D wall. So control tab, back to plan, select this wall, edit profile, and then again maybe we actually have some kind of step in the bottom of this wall as well. So that's a way of editing the profile of a wall. Sometimes walls that have their profiles edited can create problems in a plan view with adjacent walls and the edited profile wall cleaning up properly between the two walls. One way of checking that is selecting this wall and clicking reset profile. Go back to the plan view and see if the problem went away. That can help you kind of troubleshoot that issue. So again, if we hit reset, profile, we see the wall turn back to its original state. So we'll select this and hit delete to make that go away. We'll go back to our level one plan view and that's a quick look at walls in Revit.